Hello and welcome to this Dot Tross Maths video on Key Stage 5, Integrating Parametric Equations. Now just to recap what parametric equations is, it's when we have each of x and y in terms of some parameter, in this case t. Whereas with a Cartesian equation, it's when we have a single equation, single equation. relating x and y, but not some other parameter. Now we know how to integrate, usually we integrate the y value with respect to x. And if we had some limits, that would give us the area under the graph. Now when I want to integrate involving parametric equations, because the expression is in terms of t, I really need to be integrating in terms of t. So somehow I need to magically turn that dx into a dt. And here's a little trick. If you just write dx as dx over dt times dt, if you were to treat this as a fraction, can you see that those dt's would cancel and that would just simplify to the dx that we have here? So they seem to be the same, but the advantage of this form is that now we're integrating this with respect to dt, and that's a good thing because these expressions are in terms of t. So using this key formula here, and this is the only formula you need for this video, let's work out this first question. Now we want to find the area under this curve here, so we're integrating between x is 0 and x is 2, and we want to use this formula here. Now firstly note that just like when we're integrating with a substitution, we need to make sure that our limits are in terms of t instead of in terms of x, because we're going to be integrating with respect to t. So let's consider when x is 2, what would t be? Now we've got here that x is t times 1 plus t, so if x2 is equal to t1 plus t, if we just expand that out, we get 2 is equal to t plus t squared. And then this is a quadratic equation we can solve. So minus a 2, that is t plus 2 and t minus 1. So t is equal to minus 2 or t is equal to 1. Now notice here that it tells us that t is at least equal to zero. We're only considering positive t when we sketch this parametric curve. So we only want that t value of one. Similarly, if x was this lower limit of zero on our area, let's work out the equivalent t. So we've now got zero equals t times one plus t. And that means that either t is equal to zero or t is minus one. And again, t has to be positive or zero, so we get rid of that. So we've now got our new limits of zero and one instead of x values of zero and two. So now let's apply this formula here. We want to integrate between zero and two, and we want to integrate y with respect to x. But we've changed these bounds, so these x values of two and zero became t values of one and zero. The y, we can use this parametric equation here. So the y is 1 over 1 plus t. And the dx, we could see we could replace with dx over dt times dt. Now let's do that separately down here. If x was t times 1 plus t, well that's t plus t squared. If we find dx over dt by differentiating this, we get 1 plus tt. So now this dx, if we replace it for dx over dt dt, the dx over dt is 1 plus 2t. And then we've got the dt here. And this is great because now we're doing an integration just in terms of t. So let's try and simplify what we have here. If we multiply this fraction by this, if this was over 1, we get 1 plus 2t over 1 plus t. Now, this is a top-heavy fraction, and whenever you have a top-heavy fraction, you should do some algebraic long division. So if we do the 1 plus 2t, let's write it as 2t plus 1, because we tend to put the highest power first, and we're dividing it by t plus 1. Then 2t divided by t is just 2, and then 2 times this is 2t plus 2. If we subtract those, we get minus 1 here. So that means we're now instead integrating uh, the quotient, which is 2, and then minus 1, that remainder, over the thing we're originally dividing by, and we get that. And if that's unfamiliar to you, this idea of algebraic long division, I have separate videos on that. So let's do this integration now. That's going to just be 2t, and that's going to integrate to ln of t plus 1. And we have bounds of 1 and 0. So let's do two normal brackets. 
if we sub in the 1 into this expression, we get 2 minus ln of 1 plus 1, which is ln of 2. If we sub in 0 into this, this is 0 minus ln of 0 plus 1, ln of 1. Now ln of 1 is just 0, so this whole bracket disappears, and we're left with 2 minus ln 2. So that's the area of this region here. So let's do a similar thing with this second LXL question here. We want to find this region under the curve and between the x-axis. So we've got one limit here of minus 1, but we need this limit here as well. Can you see this is where y is equal to 0? So if we make y 0 here to find this x-intercept, this root, we get 0 equals 2 to the t minus 1. So 2 to the t equals 1, and therefore you can see that t is equal to 0. So here, whatever the x value is, we could find the x now because we can just sub the 0 into here, so we can see the x would be 1, and the x here is minus 1. But we saw at this point, when y was 0, that the t value was equal to 0. And at this point, if x was equal to minus 1, we get minus 1 is equal to 1 minus half t. Let's just double both sides. And then add this t, so, and add this 2, so you get t is 4. So t is 4 here and t is 0 here. So we do the usual thing, we want to integrate y with respect to x, and we're integrating between minus 1 and 1 on the x-axis, but we need to change that into t. So we worked out that when x was equal to 1, the t value was 0, and when x was equal to minus 1, the t value was 4, and then remember that this dx you replace with dx over dt, dt. So let's substitute everything in. The y here is equal to 2 to the t minus 1. The dx over dt, we're going to need to work that out. So if x is equal to 1 minus half t, then dx over dt would be equal to just minus half. So we can substitute that in here. So that's minus half and then we've got dt. So that's great, everything's in terms of t now. Now let's tidy this up. In another video I had this trick that if you swap the two limits round, so now the bigger number is on the top, that actually negates this expression. So that's going to get rid of this minus here, so we just have half brackets 2 to the t minus 1. And what we could do is we could factorise that half out of the integral. So you're always allowed to factorise a constant factor out of your integral. And that's just to tidy up what you're integrating here. So let's actually do this integration now. Now when you integrate any exponential function, so if I was to integrate a to the x with respect to x, do you remember that you divide by ln of the base? So I would get a to the x over ln of a. So we can use that result here. So that's going to become 2 to the t over ln of the base, so over ln of 2. And then the minus 1 integrates to minus t, because we're integrating with respect to t. And we've got these bounds of 4 and 0. So let's substitute these bounds in. So when we substitute the 4 into this, we get 2 to the 4 is 16 over ln 2 minus t, minus 4. And then when we sub in the 0 in, we get 2 to the 0, which is 1 minus 0. So that's just nothing there. And let's just simplify this. We've got half, and then we've got 16 over ln 2 minus 1 over ln 2 is 15 over ln 2. And then we've got this minus 4. And if we wanted to times both of these by half, that then becomes 15 over 2 ln 2. And then minus 4 times half is minus 2. And that would be the final answer.